Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. You're about to watch a replay of our Tuesday night Twitch stream, the Million Dollar Mission Week 10 Edition. This is a weekly episode on Twitch where I review my previous week's 150 NFL DFS lineups from FanDuel and DraftKings and a quest to win the $1 million top prize once again. We're very transparent. We looked through all of my results from the previous week. This particular episode, Mike Davis was a big point of discussion why I had him in 100% of my lineups on both sites. And then we took a look at what other top NFL DFS tournament players did with Mike Davis and their lineups. Other points of discussion were player pool sizes, different stacking ideas, and even if you're not making 150 lineups, whether it's with our lineup builder or with someone else's optimizer or lineup builder, or if you're just making one lineup, the topics we talk about in these weekly Million Dollar Mission episodes will certainly help you become a better tournament player in NFL DFS. So again, twitch.tv slash Occupy Fantasy is where you can watch these every Tuesday night live. You can get your questions answered live as we're discussing. Uh, or if you have any other questions, you can always hop in the comments below. Uh, so sit back, take notes. I think you'll enjoy this one. What's going on, everybody? It is Moose and Brian here from OccupyFantasy.com at Occupy Fantasy on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Uh, Brian, I guess we're going to have to be doing, uh, are they called fleets now? We're going to have to start doing those on Twitter, I guess, huh? Yeah, view our tweets and our fleets at Occupy Fantasy on Twitter. It's like we probably won't be doing very many fleets. <laughs> so, But um, that's not what we're doing here today. We're not doing fleets because it would be weird <laughs> to do fleets on Twitch. Uh, anyway, we are doing the Week 10 edition of the Million Dollar Mission where we review Brian's 150 max lineups that he did from Urgent the message. prior week before. And I forgot to turn off the Don Best odd screen, so you guys probably heard a giant of loud as fuck urgent message. <laughs> Apologize for that. Let me get out of Don Best real quick. Um, yeah, so again, we break down Brian's 150 lineups. Uh, review. We review Brian's 150 lineups, see how other top pros did, see what we can learn, and go from there. And as Chris said, it's urgent message season. What's up, T-Nasty? What's up, Bismo? Uh, but yeah, got all the introductions out the way. Brian, how are you feeling today? <laughs> I'm feeling great. I'm feeling really good, Moose. Um, I got to say, I, I don't think many people out there have ever used Don Best or like an odds platform, but um, how that works, it's a, it's just a giant odd screen of odds at all the different sports books. We talk about it in the daily, in the, 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 the ultimate guide, mm -hmm. actually, and a lot of professional sports bettors use that or a similar type service. And whenever there's like a line move or a, a, an urgent piece of information for bets, you get this alert on your on your app or your yeah and it's you either get an urgent message when like a player's been ruled out before the line moves or whatever or you get a key move which is like the most it's the, it's the best the best alert you'll get you'll, you'll get uh where multiple sports books will move the line and then you can try to get in before the net the, the books you have move the line so um that's what that sound was and it always brings back memories and moves from uh, march madness betting yeah, absolutely. And, and I will say, if that's something that you guys would be potentially interested in and Don Best or some sort of line service, uh, go to DonBest.com. They have a, like, I think it's like a four day or three day trial. Um, you give them a call up and tell them, hey, I want to try out the, the, the Platinum Edition. Gives you uh, real time information up to second. I think it's like 80 different sports books that they have now. And you'll get those, like, Steam plays, the key moves. It's actually pretty cool. So I would definitely check. If you're a, a better, you know, we're all home now. We have time to do different things, right? It, it would be on our computer for a while. Go ahead and check that out. That's definitely something I would recommend everyone trying out. Use promo code Moose to receive 0% off your first order. Exactly. Yep. They'll be like, why the fuck do we have three orders? <laughs> <laughs> promo code Moose. Um, yeah, we're not affiliated with Downvest at all. Just, I love their, their product. Anyway, uh, so let's take a look. Brian, you want to take a look at how you did last week? Yeah, let's take a look. Um, I... As we'll get into it, I will say um, pretty much everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong this past week, and my res results weren't bad, uh, which makes me really confident for future weeks. Yeah, absolutely. So as we jump into it here, uh, how you did on uh, DraftKings, 13.50 in entries, 5.16 in winnings for a minus 62% ROI. Typical. And if we switch over to FanDuel, 2466 in entries, 1587 in winnings, a little bit better, minus 36% ROI. Yeah, so your typical losing week, right? Didn't get complete. I was actually before the Hopkins touchdown, I was uh, getting pretty crushed. So that was, yeah. I guess, one thing did go right, uh, the Hopkins Hail Mary. But 
Uh, yeah, pretty typical GPP losing week, right? Minus 30, minus 60% ROI. Very typical. Um, it's when we have those spike weeks that, that get us up there. And again, obviously, we would rather have more break-even type weeks, but it's just not realistic. GPPs are hashtag hard. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll look at these weeks as they come. Yeah, and thank you, Spirals, for the all you question. Uh, it says, what's your ROI for the year? Take a look at your ROI for both sites. 31.4K in entries, 90.7K in winnings for an ROI of 189%. Yep, again, uh, and Moose, I'm sure you'll bring up the graph here in a second, but I have, just for people watching this maybe for the first time or you haven't heard this in a while, um, I have probably the most high-risk approach of any DFS player I know. Um, I, I don't think it's an exaggeration, Moose, when I say I lose personally, like m just me, myself, 95 to 98% of slates. I which, would say, yeah. If you're watching this, like, you'd be like, why would I listen to this dude, right? Obviously, I I'm only playing 150 max G GPPs. I'm only playing the most optimal play for first finishes. So naturally, I'm going to lose a shit ton. But okay. if you're listening, to if you're listening to our advice, you read Ultimate Guide, you're out there playing 100 player leagues, you're playing the satellites, uh, and your, your ROI and your wins are a lot more frequent than mine. That's for sure. Yeah. A uh, good question here from Spiral says, why don't you play big, play more big money cash games? Yeah. So you look here, the ROI for this season is 189 percent. Last year, Moose, what was it? 300 percent. Something like right? that. Right. Yeah. If I somehow had the best projections in the entire world, we don't. I, that's just that's just a fact. Right. We don't have the best pure projections. Um, if I had the absolute best projections, I would grind out like seven to eight percent ROI playing cash games if that yeah that's tough if and that's it that's playing the best people in the entire world instead i'd rather use our model which is built for for chaos and, and tournament winning upside play against multiple people and, and leverage against the field lose a lot more often but when i win my roi looks like this instead of grinding out five to six percent absolutely yeah and maybe i might be uh hashtag bad takes here to say this but Cash games are hard. Like, like, yeah. If you play in the the no badge for a dollar, cool. But you can't make a living off that. But if you're grinding out the 10k head to heads against Empire Maker, Osmo, and everyone else, like, that's going to be very difficult. Yeah, dude. I mean, at this at this day and age, right? Like 2020, information is so easy to find. Yeah. Um, the average cash game lineup against an experienced player, like. Your, your edge is either slightly positive or negative. It's just, that, that's real. But if you look at, for example, look at in our Discord channel Monday night, hey, sports fans, one of our longtime members has, has been posting his screenshots of his second half wins. He said he's literally just posting up in the lobby looking for no badge head to heads. Now, those lineups are going to be significantly worse than your average DFS player, your average player with a badge, your average player in the $10 plus head to heads. So obviously, the competition matters but if i'm trying to get down significant action if i get down thirty one thousand dollars in head-to-heads my roi i promise you is not going to be 189 percent yeah yeah like like it literally can't get higher than 100 percent. but yeah <laughs> um yeah and then yeah it's that's the biggest thing you talk about there um and let, let's hop over to the graph real quick we'll show how you do week by week this is uh courtesy of biz charts llc oh that's small as shit moose what kind of what kind of graph is this I don't know. Well, I'll make it bigger. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. So, yeah. So, start off losing. Of course, you suck the first four weeks of the season like you always do. Um, Dude, uh, when am I going to learn? When am I, when am I going to stop playing the first four weeks of the season? Yeah. <laughs> it spiked up. So, you went positive. Went yeah. down, down, down a little bit. Now, you had a super spike week. Now, you're going down a bit. A bit. Yeah, let's get let's we got to get one more spike week in here. I'm telling you, the spike almost went off the screen a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're, I, I feel we talked about it last week. I feel my process is as good as ever right now. Um, really confident. Again, weeks like nine through sixteen is my sweet spot for NFL. Um, so we're we're just hitting that here. Um, so hopefully I can put myself in position to get another big win before the season hit, uh, ends. Definitely, yeah. Uh, Spiral saying, you know, I feel like ownership is all you need for cash. To be honest. I think that I, I definitely think it's for you know generally speaking the one five ten dollar head to like cash game thing. But once you're talking about the significant, like like you said earlier, trying to get down significant thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars, it gets a little bit more more trickier than that. Yeah, for the everyone watching this, all occupied members, yes, that's that's mostly true, right? We even I mean we preach that in the ultimate guide. 
And yeah, that's definitely the case. For me personally, if I'm playing against the best players in the world, I can't just play the highest owned plays. Then I'm just playing heads up 10K, like who has the best 3K receiver? Because the rest of our eight roster spots are the same, right? And that's, yeah. that's, that's, you, you, I don't want to play a coin flip based on a 3K receiver or just a random example, but yeah, no, I definitely should. Uh, the Prince says, do y'all like a breakdown for cash and GPP contest selection? I uh, know a lot of times you'll hear in the industry, um, you know, you, I, I guarantee if you Google this, you'll see it 80 20 cash GPP. Yeah. And it's like the most outdated, just like, um, like irresponsible, I think is probably a strong word, but um, lazy is probably the best description yeah. um, because every slate's different, right? If all the best plays in our model or projections are the highest owned plays, like why would you play any GPPs? If all the best plays are low owned or there's a lot of uncertainty, why would you play 80% cash? Every single slate is different. That's why in the ultimate guide, we talk about how to pick contests based on a slate, building lineups, um, first and then choosing the contest that go with them, not not vice versa. So, um, I, I mean, again, that's why we started Occupy by Fantasy. The big missing piece in the industry is that contest selection. And uh, that's a big part of it. So, so no, we, we don't recommend play X amount of cash, X amount of GPP. It doesn't make sense to have a blanket statement like that. Yep. Totally agree with you on that one here. Um, all right, cool. So let's talk about last week. Let me get this chart off the screen. And as you said, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Went wrong. <laughs> Start off with uh, our boy Mike Davis, who apparently wanted just to break his broke his own thumb to play PS5, but don't, <laughs> that actually didn't happen. But, um, yeah, so yeah. you locked him in both sites, and you were mentioned beforehand in the stream. You have a list of people that you wanted to see as well, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I I do want to say thank you to everyone who subscribes to Occupy Fantasy, who watches our streams, listens to our podcast, watches the Periscope, whatever, however you consume our content, because we could not have been more adamant in saying you have to put Mike Davis into 100% of your lineups. He literally had a floor outcome, and we received zero hate mail. Maybe we got some unsubscriptions. I haven't checked yet, but no one hated us. No one was like, you fucking idiots. I can't believe you told me to play Mike Davis. So thank you to everyone for being realistic and, and understanding what the situation was about. It means we're... We have some pretty smart viewers and members, so th thanks to everyone for that. I will say though, can real quick, is I, I put out a tweet and I was like, if you didn't play Mike Davis, can you tell me why? Like, no hate, no judge, no whatever. And I got a bunch of people uh, responding back after the slate was like, actually, I picked Jakeem Grant because he was in a better matchup. I picked Wayne Gallman. It's like, sure, you did. Okay, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. You're only saying it after the slate, like after they yeah. scored. Something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see the timestamp, bro. Yeah, so, exactly. um, but again, so we, we told you to put them in 100% of your lineups because what did we say, right? Most like in these historical situations, pros generally play him in 90 to 95% of lineups. We have yeah. backup running back who catches passes. Now, again, they got freight trained. They lost by like 20 points. They ran the, the fewest amount of plays they've run all season by a wide margin. They ran like 42 offensive plays. And Mike Davis broke his thumb in the middle of the game. So absolute, just like nothing went like, right like, in like that game. Chaos in the other direction. Yeah, absolute chaos in the other direction. And he still scored six to eight points, depending on what side you're looking on. And at 4K, if you were playing smaller contests, you still won with Mike Davis, as long as you had a good lineup around him. Right? Big GPPs, you're not winning with Mike Davis. That wasn't going to happen. Yeah. But like, I saw a ton of screenshots of people winning 100 to 500 player contests, even larger with Mike Davis in one of the running back spots because of what he allowed you to do with the rest of your lineups. So we weren't just predicting that shit out of thin air. I want to show you who I think some of the best NFL DFS players are and what they did with Mike Davis. Okay. And this is in the, the football millionaire. Should we change it, change the contest to something different or keep it as a millionaire? Yeah, let's go to the slant because I think that's more representative of what people are truly doing. The millionaire is such a different contest with uh, the, the, the upside and whatnot. So um, just I have a list of like, Eight or ten people here. So, a hits Pat. A H I T S P A T. Um, this dude's one like A H I T S. A hits Pat. Okay. Um, he's legit won like three GPPs in like the last three weeks. Been crazy. <laughs> so he so what used eighty-five percent uh, Mike Davis. Yeah. Okay. Um, B K Ryder, overall top ten player, really good in NFL. B K R E I. He only had one entry. Oh, um, maybe I was looking at the millionaire for him then. So we'll, we'll ignore that one. He did have Mike Davis, so 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, um, our guy, DeColtz, D-A-C-O-L-T-Z, that we love to look at, who just has been 
absolutely dominating DFS for the past few years. I'll, I will say, every time I'm grinding uh, FanDuel ownership, like the hour it takes me, I, I see him all over the place. I was like, dude, this dude's a beast. He's always in contention, like, every time. He's a, he's a monster, dude. He's won the million once, won 500K in the same year. He's won 200K twice this year. Um, really one of the guys we should model our GPP game theory after. He's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, he had 94% Mike Davis. Okay, so uh, good to know that one of the best DFS players out there did the same thing. Um, let's look at Giant Squid um, over at SaberSim. He wins a shit ton of GPPs. Let's see what he did. Yeah, I don't know why it always... I, I uncheck it, and then it doesn't uncheck it here. Um, he did 98% <laughs> Mike Davis. Okay, so there you go. Let's do um, I Slewfoot You. You just do I. Um, I don't know if he has a, a, a underscore after the I. But I underscore okay. or just I You. Yeah, I Slewfoot You. Top 10 player. 93% Mike Davis. Okay, good to know. Um, let's look at Mock Lovin, who's probably the best NFL player, I would say. Um, maybe one of the best overall DFS players. M O K L O V I N. Lock button. Lock button, 100%. And it's funny, actually. So I played um, last night, just a, just a quick aside, I played a 333 satellite for the 3K um, showdown uh, GPP on DraftKings last night. Um, I, th I finished like seventh or something. Bullshit. So I was looking through all the lineups, and there's three names I recognized. It was Udacow, Mach Lovin, um, Tom Papa Giorgio, three, three high-volume players. Um, most of the lineups in that contest, I was like, what the fuck are these people doing? Like, these lineups don't make any sense. I get to Mach Lovin, and his lineup made the most sense. I was like, well, go figure. He's one of the best players in the world. So yeah. there you go. Um, Mr. Good Seats, been around for a while. Good DFS player. You want me looking him up? Yeah, let's look at Mr. Okay. Good Seats. Uh, real quick, Spirals wants to see what Osmo did. So we'll, we'll take a look at him. Uh, he did 64%, Mike Davis. Yeah, he did. And I will say, Osmo is a lot better. Um, and maybe he'll... I don't know why he would, but if he comments on this, maybe he'll he'll suggest otherwise. I think he's a much better smaller field GPP player than um, large field GPP. That's at least that's my uh, that's my uh, characterization of Osimo. Uh, again, nothing wrong with copying his style. He's really good. So, yeah, he's uh, I, I, but yeah, I think there are a lot. I think there are other DFS players better than him at large field, especially NFL. Yeah, and so who was the person you wanted to see next? Uh, uh, Mr. Good Seats. Mr. Good Seats. Lock button. 100%. There we go. Um, and then Under Jones. Under Jones. 86%. All right, perfect. So we get a lot of... So the people that I looked at to study their NFL DFS before I started 150 Max and the guys, we continually see win big NFL DFS GPPs. They did exactly what we thought they were going to do, Moose, right? They either lock button or played 95%. I don't understand the 95% thing. I guess maybe there's some sort of rule they have yeah. for non-Mike Davis lineups or something. I don't know. But either way, the point remains. When we get a spot like this, and this isn't a broken record. No matter what Mike Davis did, when this comes up in week 14 or whatever next, we're going to tell you to do the same thing. Because literally the best players in the world who get 1099s for millions of dollars every year from FanDuel and DraftKings are doing this. Yeah. So we should do it ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And last person we'll check for that, uh, Chipotle Attic, because Spiral's asked. Yeah, and I, again, we're not we're not going to dive into the theories here, but um, him and Papa Gates have overlap, and I, I'm not going to say, but like it's tough to, to, to look at their individual sets of lineups and, and glean any information Yeah, just because of what we know about them. Yeah, so he played 59% Mike Davis. I think Papa Gates had 85%, if I'm not mistaken, when I was looking earlier. And yeah, and just to go back, uh, yeah, eighty-three percent, yeah. And you know, it goes back to what we saw. And I, I gotta f dig up the chart again, maybe get the more more recent data. You see people either zero, which is like on the rarer side, uh, mm -hmm. match the field, which is a little bit more common, or just lock button ninety-five plus. So that's so yeah, those are three options. And as you look at the best players in the world, you see what they do: copy their style. Yeah. They yeah. they they win yeah. millions for a reason. Yeah, exactly. No surprise this week that the person who won the GPP, and maybe you'll say, Brian, why don't we just fade this person who was, you know, percent owned by some of the 150 maxers and just pray he fails. 
sure, that's certainly the case. And if you look at Megan Joy, M E A G A N Joy, um, I assume it's a she. Um, I don't know. Won both the million and the slant. Not that the slant's a great prize compared to the million, but just like crushed every GPP this week. Um, I think she had, you know, 14% Mike Davis or something, which makes sense. If you're going to win multiple GPPs on a week where a 50% on running back fails, you probably didn't have a lot of them. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. I want to say 12 or 22 or 14%, 14% or something. percent yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously it worked out for her. She's a million dollars richer. I assume it's a her. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's merit to doing it. But, again, time and time again, we see what the best players do. Yep, absolutely. And then especially, and you got to figure, Moose, we're looking at – the, the biggest GPPs on DraftKings. Yeah. For everyone listening to this, everyone watching Occupy Fantasy content, reading the daily plug, um, we're recommending you not to play these for a wide variety of reasons, right? And if you're if you are playing these, you're playing hopefully at least you, hopefully you've learned from us and you're using the lineup builder to play the mini max or the one dollar or whatever it is, right? You're not playing these biggest ones. But again, it makes even more sense in smaller contests to lock them in. And yeah. I think a lot of our members did do that. And a lot of our members still won, despite Mike Davis breaking his thumb and being on the field for like 12 plays. Yeah, exactly. As we talk about on these large field GPPs, you need to literally hit every spot in order to, to win. But if you're playing 100 player leagues, you're uh, under 1,000 player contests, you can have one, two, three, even shit the, bre- shit the bed and still come out on top. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, again, not sound like a broken record. We said it last week. When Jalen Samuels was in, this, was in this spot and he only scored 10 points, um, I still won 100K with that in a big field GPP, mm-hmm. uh, the million. And so um, Mike Davis, even at six points, probably could have gotten you there. If you had a, a perfect lineup around him, you probably still could have won a big GPP, I think, with him um, based on some of the other uh, plays. Um, if he got up to 10 to 12 points, we'd have been rolling. So Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as Brad Atar says, yeah, we have a lineup builder now. So if you guys are interested yeah. in using lineup builders... Let's check ours out. I'll put, I'll put the link in the the Twitch chat here. If you're watching, if you're watching this replay on YouTube, it's in the description. Cool. Yep, yep. Cool, cool. So yeah, so go check that out. If uh, I will say, there's a learning curve, but that's almost with any any optimizer, you're going to have a learning curve. There's YouTube videos. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, if you have more questions, ask either in the Discord if you're a Discord member or uh, on our Saturday stream. Most, I would say that it, literally any software product has a learning curve. And if people are coming into it not expecting that, then I think it's just not a realistic expectation. I don't know. I feel like there's some software, uh, but I'm just like picking strings here where I don't, never, I'm just whatever I was going to say was going to just be bad for people. So I'm going <laughs> to say it. Um, <laughs> um, real quick, Moose, I do want to say that normally we recommend three games to stack per week. So that's six mm-hmm. quarterbacks in uh, 150 lineups. Um, this week, I only did four quarterbacks. I don't know if you want to bring up my, my lineups in the slant. Yeah. Um, Chris talked about it in the plug. Like We literally could not find a third game stack we liked. I really like the combinations for the, the two high total game stacks. So I literally, this is the tightest player pool I've ever had with Mike Davis and a couple of the other running backs. I only had five to six running backs. Um, I only stacked two games, had four quarterbacks. So... When everything went wrong and I had a really tight player pool, <laughs> to see only, and I put this in quotes, only a minus 30 or minus 60% ROI, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, when I was doing, because I, I do the, the I, I still don't even know what it's called, I feel like I should know it by now, but the, the five cent the, the five cent contest on FanDuel, the mini max, whatever you want to call it, uh, I was doing it and you know I couldn't find a third game I liked. I was looking in the lineup builder and it spit out, it was like 41 players. And I was like, these lines are terrible. I was like, I, I can't do this. So... <laughs> I end up just 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 taking a step back, you know, realizing okay, even though it's only 750, it's not really anything to the bankroll. But I was just doing it for practice. I was like, I, I can't in good faith do this, and then I end up doing it anyway. But still, like <laughs> the fact that I was able to take a step back, I was like, all right, something's definitely wrong here. Let me go ahead and figure right. out what I'm doing wrong and fix it. Well, I mean, you're doing it to practice 150 too, right? Like it doesn't matter if it's seven dollars or not. Like you're practicing the 150, which is what we tell people to do. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ken says, how much did that Hopkins touchdown help you? It helped me a ton. Uh, yeah, that was massive, dude. Um, I want to say it was like a 5K swing on FanDuel or something crazy. It was it was, it was, was really helpful. So um, shout out to Andre. Yeah. Ed says, what's up, fellas? Week 11 equals Occupy Week. Screw chalk sacks. We finna get Chris's crystal ball. 
Okay. I'm yeah. Well, so um, I'm talking with Chris on the podcast this week, who obviously write it up in the plug. But really, no standout games. Looking ahead to Week 11 from a stack standpoint, no like gimme's 56 point total game. So we're gonna have to work to find the best stacks this week, which uh, should be an edge. I'm excited. Definitely. Bismo says that you have any Beasley. I was off him and went uh, smoky in stacks. Yeah, nice thing about having 150 lineups and only stacking two games, you, you get pretty deep into combos. I actually did like Beasley this week. I know the model was high on him. And uh, the fact that he hadn't done much in the last couple of games, I knew he would have the lowest ownership of the three main Buffalo receivers. I think he checked in at 2 or 3% in GPPs, uh, which obviously was helpful, helpful here too. Yes, yeah, as Chris points out, Beasley literally with the best DraftKings points game of his last two seasons. Hey man, sometimes you get lucky. And you had uh, you had twelve percent Beasley. The field had six point four for a leverage of five point six. Nice. I th- yeah, I think on on Fanduel he was two percent, if I'm not mistaken. So that's where I got the most leverage. Cool, cool, awesome. Um, one thing also we like to look at, and not so much in the slant, but in the millionaire make, we like to look at duplicate lineups, kind of just see what it's been what it's spitting out. The most recent duplicate lineups. Uh, we take a look here. The most just in terms of users. Most I, will say, I will say, by the way, while you're looking this up, Moose, I had 100% Mike Davis, who was like 50% owned. I had zero duplicate lineups, stacking the two chalkiest games of the week with a 50% owned running back. So wow. it just goes to show you that we, we get a lot of questions about ownership every week. It doesn't matter. If you three by one stack or, or efficiently stack, like we say, you play high volume running backs, you play underperforming receivers, you play the model plays at tight end defense. Your lineup is literally going to be unique and have high upside. And yeah, it, it doesn't get any simpler than that. And we'll go and we'll we'll test that with the the, the stack seeker next on this. Um, but the top two duplicated lines both had Kyler Murray in it. Um, if we look here, I'm actually surprised. And I don't know why when you sort on Fancy Labs, like the view box goes away. It's just like a generic thing. Um, but it did put. Did it have Mike Davis? The first one did. Yeah, both both had Mike Davis, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty. Looks like they just went with Kyler Murray, Duke, uh, Aaron Jones, Duke Johnson, and Mike Davis, and then just filled in the rest. Yeah, so the, the most duplicated lineup was a two by one stack, it looks like. Yeah. Right? So let's go over to the stack seeker and take a look. Um, because I think we could, again, we, we talked about this before, and we, I think we've shown this a couple of times, but really just visualize how few people are stacking. So let's do, let's do Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins. And so let's take a look at this. Okay. So real quick. So let me go back here. So Kyler is 18.6% owned in the Millie. Mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins is 16. Combine them together, only 7% of entries used them. Okay. So if you're using Kyler or if you're using DeAndre, right, like you probably want to use the quarterback regardless. Okay. 7%. Instead of DeAndre, let's, let's look at Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk. It was just a, a couple percentage points down, so six point eight three percent. So not not the, I guess the savings, people, especially his big week last week. So that makes sense. All right, let's go back to DeAndre Hopkins. Let's do Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins. Okay. So we get back up to the seven percent or whatever it is. Yep. Uh, let's throw in Stephon Diggs. Let's throw in Diggs, who was the most duplicated trio at least in the. Yep, and he was twenty one percent. That drops down to two percent of entries, and you only have so literally, literally the best. The best two by one stack on the board by projected points, game total, targets, literally only two percent of the field did it, right? If you take out Diggs and put in Beasley, what does that drop it to? Just for example. So we have Kyler, DeAndre Hopkins, Cole Beasley. I don't know why I got rid of everything here. Um, <laughs> and DeAndre Hopkins. You have point you have a half a percent. <laughs> so there you go. So 0.5% of people did, and this is just a two by one stack. We haven't even gotten into three by one stacks yet. So you imagine how few, much fewer people are doing three by one stacks when you should be. Um, so just by doing this, which is the most upside you can have in a DFS lineup, a three by one NFL stack, even though it's the most popular game on the board, half percent, one to two percent of lineups are doing it. And that's not even including high volume running backs, underperformed receivers, the best tight ends and defenses according to our model. So I understand why people get concerned about ownership and GPPs, especially for other sports, right? And we talk about it so much in showdown, MMA, League of Legends, things like that. Yeah. NFL, there's not much thinking to it. Like we don't have to worry about ownership in the slightest for high risk contests. Yep. 
Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, what would, what would be, in this case, your opinion, the most chalkiest three by one stack? Um, I'm, I guess because of pricing, it would either be like Golf, Woods, Cup, Metcalf. All right, so let's see, Golf. I don't even know if that's true, but that, that's a kind of just based on pricing. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, you said golf was Metcalf, and who else? Cooper Cup. Yeah, Cooper Cup. So if you do that, I don't know if that's not the case, but you're right again. 0.42 percent. Cool. So less than one half of one percent of the field did one of the best. This is the like probably the best triple stack uh, or three by one stack. So. Yeah. And then Again, you, just like, like just just throwing in there. If you add the most popular defense, which is the Saints, I mean, you're at, at 0.1 percent. Yeah, now you're not competing with anyone. Even if you look, dude. All right, so go back, take out the Saints defense, and just add Mike Davis, the like the most popular player we'll see on a slate in some time. Cool. I don't know why it does that, but um, Cup, <laughs> all right, Cup, Metcalf, Woods, and uh, this is like Simon says, trying to remember all the things. Dude, I know. <laughs> Um, go. There you go. 0.29%. So there you go. So, I mean, again, this is just an exercise, and we like to do this from time to time. You can go to the Fantasy Labs contest dashboard and look at this yourself and play around with it to get an idea of mixing it, mixing and matching uh, stack plays. But the, the overarching conclusion is people don't stack enough. If you're worried about stacks being popular, there's really no need for it to be that. Like, it's not like we're getting most, like, 20% of the field stacking a game, right? We get less than 1% optimally stacking. And here's the thing. This is out of 207,000 lineups. If you're playing your 100-player leagues, even 10,000-person contests, this is going to, like, if you just 3-1 stack, you're probably going to be the only person that does it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So, again, until the field changes or scoring changes or, or, like, how football is played changes – like we'll continue to do this in print money. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you on that. So uh, we're off time. Uh, usually we're, we're here until ten thirty. But if you guys have any last couple questions, go ahead and ask. Take a look at uh, the position usage tab, which I don't. I got to find a way to make this actually look on screen. I think it looks a little bit better. Uh, but you can see uh, in the Millionaire Maker, fifty three percent people use fifty four percent used wide receiver in, in flex, forty used a running back. And 6% use a tight end, which is a little bit less, but I'm guessing because of Mike Davis, Duke Johnson, all those people, people were able to fit those in. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, talking about Duke Johnson, Mike Davis, I, I figured that flex running back would be a lot more this week, especially with Kamara and Jones. But you would think. Um, but yeah, I don't. That's weird. Again, and again, yeah. So again, just to show they go across the different contest levels, six, six and a half use a tight end in the Millionaire Maker. We go to the slant, which is the nine dollar contest. Which is sharper in general. It's sharper in general. Sharper, yeah. Three and a half. You jump to the three, three, three Wildcat, which again is sharper. Yep. Two, two and a half percent. And then you go to the luxury box, which is just flooded with sharps. Yeah. 0.7. Only two entries used the tight end and flex. Damn. Imagine imagine being those two people. Rip. It, it's probably <laughs> duplicated. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so, uh, again, it shows. Again, it goes back to, Brian, Brian, it goes back to what we said earlier in the stream. It's like, there are guys who make millions off this. Learn from them. Like, look at what they do and do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, yeah, that's, I mean, one the, uh, Jonathan Bales, co-founder of Fantasy Labs, he has, uh, I encourage everyone to go read his new blog he has. He talks about how to learn properly and it's like find people who are good at what they do and just learn from them and like this contest dashboard allows us to do that it's how i developed my new pga strategy that we've been talking about the core strategy um showdown not as much but we've been doing our own basically contest dashboard right moose yeah and of course nfl 150 and nba 150 looking at what people do yeah wig said i came in late did you mention at the beginning how you thought you failed us this week i saw that comment in discord sunday Oh yeah, sorry. It's it, sometimes it doesn't come across on the internet, but it was sarcastic because Ed posted a a screenshot of someone with like a five by one Tampa Bay stack. Um, I can't believe that and he won like fifteen hundred dollars. That person, um, I said, yeah, we failed you for not telling you to just five stack Tampa Bay. So yeah, it was a joke. Uh, we definitely didn't fail you, or at least not anything we did. Yeah, and also I, I don't know, Brian, if you have a couple minutes to talk about it, but 
you know, we were talking, I and mean, you were talking to, to Nero Mata, you were talking to Bismo, talking to me, uh, everyone about it. It's like a little, I don't know if you want to say it's a strategy, but more of like a, I don't know how you would say, a little mental aspect of it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and and we do have Ed's question we'll get to right, right before we get out of here and post a little higher. So, Ed, if you're still watching, we got you. We'll answer it. Oh, we, real quick. We... Yeah, let me answer it. So, so if we run 3-1, would you set rules of two running back ownerships over 25% and two underperforming wide receivers? Um, Definitely three by one. So definitely three by one. Get that in there. Running back, not necessarily ownership, generally it correlates. Um, but look in the model for weighted opportunities. Just sort by weighted opportunities and get it gets get those guys, right? Guys who are guaranteed to touch the football. If they're cheaper, great. But um, generally it's going to be your Camaras and McCaffrey type running backs. Um or your, your backup cheap running backs. And then underperforming receivers, yeah, generally we want to get two if we can. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way based on pricing and game stacks and whatever. Uh, uh, I generally would just, if you're, if you're using the lineup builder, I would just manually bump up their their min exposures. Or if you're hand building, just try to fit them in where you can. Yep. Definitely. Yep. So, yeah, so this thing that you were telling us about, uh, I guess you just want to jump right into it. Yeah, I mean, just uh, Niramata is great on the mental side of things, and I've been talking to him a lot. And, um, you know, it, <laughs> losing can happen in DFS pretty often to a lot of people, and it can affect you whether a lot of people it affects them directly and it, like, they can feel it affected in the process. Other people, it's probably a subconscious effect when you lose a shit ton and you're trying to, you think you're doing the right thing, but deep down in your brain, your brain's telling you, hey, we need to make less. Uh, risky decisions because we've been losing so goddamn much. Um, but Niramata said, hey, dude, just go, like, literally go exercise, work out before you build lineups. Look at some of your biggest wins in the past. Just get that confidence reflowing through your brain. And whether it's subconscious or actually conscious, you, you'll you'll be more confident building your lineups, have a better process. Um, Harvard, I can't remember, I was At this point, I was like, dude, I'll try it because uh, I'd had a rough streak of losing um, literally a week later, paying for the 65K or whatever it was. Yeah. So, uh, um, I'm fully on board. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even when you're in Puerto Rico for the the WFFC final uh, live championship, you woke up and like we didn't talk to you. Our group didn't talk to you, and we were like, "Where the hell's Brian? You're doing yoga on the beach." It's just like three hours before lock. And I was like, "Dude, what are you doing? Make your lineups!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> had to get my had to get my chickens in my middle. Had to make sure they're straight, bro. Exactly. Yeah, but again, yeah, it goes back to the point where it's like, if your mind is flooded either directly or indirectly sometimes you need a little extra push whether it's exercise read a book take a bath with bath bomb or whatever you do that helps you make you just get back in that that mental state do it yeah and that's i mean that we're talking dfs right for me it's like literally i, li I live and breathe it yeah. um it's probably inconsequential for a lot of people that play and, and subscribe to occupy at least compared to other things in their life so even if you don't take this advice for dfs take it and apply it to other areas of your life um i feel like a lot of things we learn in dfs we can apply to other areas of our life so um hopefully some of that can translate for you yeah and to answer chris's question anything with lavender always good always a good choice for those who can't see the chat uh chris asked what moose's favorite bath bomb is so <laughs> lavender yeah don't take don't take many baths these days but um that's getting on the weird side of things. Um, all right, so that'll pretty much wrap it up. Brian, is there any last couple, any anything else you want to add on to this? No, I thought this was a really good episode, um, even though I lost. I feel like a lot of times the losing episodes are more informational than the winning episodes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we, we end up looking at the winning lineup and celebrating and whatnot, whereas the losing lineups, we, we get to, to dive deeper into different topics and questions. So, um um, the more I lose, the more you guys will win. Um, hopefully, the, the, those are fewer and far between. Definitely, yep. So, uh, again, just if you're watching this replay on YouTube or Twitch, hit the subscribe or follow button if you made it this far. I give you a thumbs up. Not many people do that. Um, if you're here now, thank you for watching. Uh, again, if you have more questions, go ahead and ask on the Discord. Uh, but until then, we will be back Saturday. We break down the next week of NFL. So, until then... Moose and Brian from Occupy Fantasy. Peace out. Peace.